Hello everyone, I'm June, the Happy Thai Girl. If you know me, I'm not a big fan of meatloaf at all, but I found a great recipe that won my heart. So meatloaf is on the menu today on Cooking Made Easy with June, brought to you by Macy's, the happy shopping store in Spanish Fork. Welcome to Cooking Made Easy with June, and today's episode is meatloaf. Now I know, I talked to a couple of people and we're like, mm, not a big fan, and I've had some interesting experiences with meatloaf, because I feel like people just put whatever and you know, never know what's in it. <laughs> so one time um, I served a mission in Los Angeles, and I remember this family, bless their heart, they invite the missionaries over every week, but they made a peanut butter meatloaf. And we just like, okay, we just ate it, and we just smiled, and it was okay. <laughs> so I don't know if that was what got me, but honestly, um, until I went to Cracker Barrel, and my family loved this meatloaf that Cracker Bar Barrel made, and so we decided to look for some uh, examples or copycat recipe, and I found this one. There were different ones, but this one was so great, and I've already made it twice. And anyway, so you start out with ground beef. Um, actually, they expect, um, they recommend the 80-20%. And so this is awesome because I went to Macy's and they had this Angus ground beef 80-20 on sale for like three bucks a pound. So I, I got some and I'm so excited. It's all easy. I love working with ground beef, honestly, um, because it's just right there. It's already. So we have two pounds of 80-20 ground beef. And now if you have ground sirloin, it's even better. So anyways, so, um, and then we, all we do is we, um, we want to mince the, our vegetables. Now the recommendation is, you know, honestly, one time I did make it with um, carrots instead of green, pe green bell peppers because I didn't have any, but I love onion and I've also used um, the dried onions before and that's also great. But a lot of, my son hates, does not like the texture of onions. So um, I want to take fresh onion and I decided to grind it up in my blender. So this is uh, what I'm going to do. So I'm actually going to put, um, ground the, um, my bell peppers and the onion together because we're just gonna mix it all together anyway. So I'm going to cut up everything in chunks and then put it in there. Now, some blenders are not as, uh, does not blend as well as others, um, but this one, my Vitamix, I love because it really gets it fine. Um, and so, but some people do like the chunks in it, so that's okay too if you just want to chop it to where it's a little bit more chunky. So I'm just going to do a, some thicker cuts, and I'm just going to put it in my blender. I think I got some peel in there, but that's okay. <laughs> It's edible, we won't die. And let's see, my cover is, <laughs> I'll just put this up, it doesn't really make a big deal. Hold a second, I've gotta plug this in. All right. Okay, so I'm just gonna turn that on. So a lot of times you want to pulse it to get the little chunks in the bottom. For all blenders are like that. And then I'm going to turn it on to just... So it depends on your blender on how you want to manage it. So honestly, I like mine even more fine than that. So I'm going to push it in there. So it's not going to be like pureed, it's going to be like small chunks. So I'm just going to dump that into our bowl of meat. So meatloaf is awesome because it's so easy. So this recipe, I'm going to show you the secret recipe in just a minute, I mean the secret ingredient in just a sec. So you get your veggies, um, that's what keeps it moist. 
are the different veggies. You can also use celery. You could use, like I said, carrots, um, different things like that into it. So I got that green in here. I think that's good for now. Now, I, do I dare putting crackers in here with the wet thing? OK, so the secret ingredient is these Ritz crackers. <laughs> it calls for like 48 crackers. Um, so instead of breadcrumbs, that's what we're going to put in here. So we're going to put 48. So each of these sleeves are 13. So I believe I put 3 times 13 is 39. Oh, goodness. There we go. Let's just put it right in there. Get some scissors. We'll go a little bit faster. So we've got 26, 39. I wonder if anyone's going to count me as I do this right. They're probably going, ah, oh, Jim, you put too many. <laughs> it won't hurt it, but I like to. So 39, 40, 41, 42, 44, 46. 48. All right, I'm just going to do this. I do love my Vitamix. Yeah, see, because I put it in a little bit wet, it's going to do this. I'm going to shake it a little bit. There we go. So I guess you could um, just watch me do this. Honestly, have you ever seen those cooking shows where they just cook and nobody's talking? You look up on YouTube, there are like some shows where they're just cooking and all the sounds of cooking. It's pretty fun. I'm gonna take my little spatula and just gonna blend it in there. So you do want the crackers to be kind of fine because I, you don't really want chunks of crackers, so it's important that you do this to make sure it goes away. And I suppose I could do a little bit of time, and I could should start out with doing the crackers first. <laughs> so there we go. Oh my gosh, <laughs> is that not fun? A lot of things going on at the same time. I'm gonna turn off my timer. There we go, look at that. Now, if you had your lid all prepared, it wouldn't be this messy. I'm going to turn that off. All right, so that looks pretty fine. So then we just dump that in there. My crumbs and put my spatula to get it all in there, or most of it. So that was my mistake that I put my dry ingredient to blend after I do a wet ingredient. Duh. Okay, but look at how pretty that is. Actually, I can really smell it. And then we need three eggs. Now, I love this recipe because in re actually, you can... Um, And then some milk, half a cup of milk. I got some crumbs sprinkled on there. This recipe you can make ahead. And it, it makes a large loaf and you can make a head and put it in the fridge and then the next day you're all ready. I love making this for Sundays because um, like I said, you make a head and then you just stick it in the oven the next day and you won't have to do a lot on Sunday. You can really rest. Now I love, I've been trying to use gloves when I do my meat because it's just much better, to, easier to wash your hands and get to your nails. So anyway, so you just um, mix it all together. And this is the fun part. You can have your kids help you. You can say, all right, let's make meatloaf. <laughs> They're so excited. OK. And you don't have to make it like to where it's so mushy mushy. You know what I mean? Like, like to make it like a sausage mixture. If we just kind of toss it in here like this, 
Oh, I forgot salt and pepper. Yeah, I'll use this. I haven't used it again. So we have a teaspoon of salt. This is a half. And then a quarter teaspoon of pepper. Oh gosh, I forgot to put cheese in it. Grated cheese. This is sharp cheddar cheese. I'll just take this off. So we got a great, and I already measured, this is about four ounces, which is about half a cup of cheese. I love sharp cheese. I'm not a big cheese fan, but certain brands, um, and Macy's has all different brands. And actually this is a Tillamook brand that I love. And it's sharp, extra sharp. I remember one time I grated some butter because I wanted to soften it quickly and my husband walked by and grabbed a handful and just put it in his mouth and thought it was cheese because <laughs> it looked like grated cheese. Okay, there we go. Let me get another glove. All right, let me use this. It won't take long to mix this up. So with the cheese, you want to spread it out a little bit. You don't want to make little clumps of cheese. And I have salt in there. So in a way, I'm actually folding it in, not necessarily mushing it together. Okay, looks lovely. And that's, that's it. Look, I'm going to... Um, now here's another trick, a tip that I found on the online, and you know, you, you see recipes online, but if you would like to try it, sometimes you're afraid to try because of all those ingredients, even though it has great reviews. So you just, when I, so you just come to me, <laughs> or email me or whatever, and then I will try out some new recipes for you, but this recipe is awesome. So it's set, so we don't want to put it in a loaf pan because then it makes it um, too dense and heavy, and I think, and, and so we're just going to form it into like um, a light loaf, you know? So, so just like this, makes a big loaf. But now this will shrink because it's 80-20, but all the flavor is in there. So I'm just going to kind of do a, like a rectangle, like a large loaf. The, now you could also make it higher like this, but I love the crusty part. So I like to have more of the crusty, you know how when you bake it, it has a little crust all around it. That's my favorite. So, so I like to make it a little bit of a lower loaf. Some people like the middle, so then you can make it a higher loaf. So I'm just gonna do it like that. And that's it. So I'm going to stick this in the oven and it's going to be for 30 minutes and then we'll, um, we're gonna take a little break and we're going to make the sauce that goes on top and then we put that on top and then we bake it again. So come back. All right, guys. Ooh, look at this. It's not even finished yet or it looks amazing. It's gonna be so good. Can okay, put that close to the oven. Now we are going to make the sauce, which is just the ketchup, which is, uh, let's see, ketchup and um, brown sugar. So I'm gonna, one is three quarter of a cup. So I'm gonna have like, like this, that's a quarter. <laughs> one, two, three, four. So a quarter cup is about um, four tablespoons. So I put approximately 12 tablespoons in there. And then we have two tablespoons of brown sugar and a teaspoon of brown of yellow mustard. So I'm just gonna put a little yellow mustard in here. I actually really like mustard, so I'm gonna put a little bit more. And then some brown sugar. So two tablespoons of brown sugar. I'm seeing a little rushy because I wanna stick this back in the oven right away. So that's about one and two. So now I'm going to whisk it together, actually. Get it really incorporated. Try not to have chunks in there, but honestly, it doesn't matter. It'll still be so good, even if I have chunks in here, because my looks like my brown sugar is a little bit dry today. 
some reason. New package too. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know what I heard? If you have your brown sugar gets older, you could stick it in a in a bag, like a Ziploc bag or something, and put a piece of bread, and then you cover it up, and it'll just like moisten it because of the moisture in the bread will get absorbed into the brown sugar. It really works. So you have to try that. Okay, so this is good enough. I'm going to spread it on the top. It's going to be so good. Now, my husband actually loves barbecue sauce, which is very similar to this mixture, if you really think about it, where uh, barbecue sauce, it has the, the tomato ketchup and the brown sugar and the mustard and different other spices, maybe a little bit more spicy, um, cooked down with some smoke flavoring. So you actually could just put barbecue sauce on top of this. So I'm gonna get all that in here and get the sauce going here on top. Okay, yummy. So that looks, there it is. So I'm gonna put this back in the oven. So, oh, I don't wanna burn myself. Where did I put my, oh, there it is. Back in the oven. And bake it another 30 minutes, 30 to 40 minutes. So I'm gonna put the timer on to 30 or 40 minutes. 14, 15, 16, 17. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. I almost got it. There we go. I'm going to do 30 minutes and then I'm going to check it. Okay, so now while it's in the oven, then you guys can make, we're going to make some carrots. So I'm going to turn um, carrots. I, I put a little bit of water. It's so in a way I'm really steaming it, not really boiling it. So I put a little bit of water like that, depending on how many carrots you're going to make. I'm going to turn that on and just put my carrots in there. Now, I like, you know how you just, vegetables are like this. You know, vegetables are just depending on um, how fresh it is. You just never can guarantee how good it's going to be. And I love, carrots are meant to be deliciously a little sweet. So, um, oh, this is not my honey. Where did I put my honey pot? Oh, here it is. I have two honey pots for some reason. Okay, so here's my real honey pot. <laughs> so what I do is I put some honey in my carrots, just a little bit like that, maybe depending on how many. So just kind of like a drizzle over all the surface of it, depending on, and to add a tiny bit of a sweetness. I also like to add a little bit of salt and pepper to it. So not too much, so just a little bit. Like we can always add more salt, but it adds that salt, you know, sweet, and a little bit of pepper on it. And I also like to do a little bit of butter. I'm cut half of that, maybe like a half tablespoon, just to add a little richness to it. And I'm just going to stir it a little bit like this, and, and we'll stir it some more. So I'm gonna stir it up like this and see how we just have enough water just to barely cover or to steam it so we're not boiling out all the goodness. I'm gonna switch stoves because I'm going to keep that one on, on medium high. I'm going, let's see, where's my lid? So then I just do that and I cover it and let it cook up and maybe when it starts to boil, you simmer it down. And then we move to the gravy. <laughs> Remember I always say, American food is so much harder. It's time consuming, although the meatloaf is easy, but you've got all these little sides. If you take Thai food, a curry, you put it all in one pot, or if you have a stir fry, you put it all in one pot. I'm not complaining or anything, because I do love American food, and, and it's a comfort food thing, so. But anyway, so here we go. <laughs> so I already, um, so for your gravy, I, the reason I wanted to show you also, because um, gravy, because the meatloaf doesn't make a gravy. Do you know what I mean? And so I love the traditional meatloaf with mashed potatoes and some kind of a steamed veggie. It's all soft and warm and gooey for a cool Sunday meal or even a weekday dinner. So I'm just, um, so basically all gravy to thicken is about the same. You can either do this option if you want to go gluten-free, then of course you would boil your broth or whatever and um, thicken it with cornstarch. But I'm going to do it the traditional way. So about 
depending, like let's say you put two tablespoons of butter, you want to put about two tablespoons of, um, of flour. But here I have about three tablespoons of each. So you want to make sure that you cook it uh, for just a few seconds um, to make sure all the butter's melted and let it simmer for a minute because you don't want the um, flour to be grainy. So that's the purpose of browning, well, browning the flour. You don't want to burn it either. So you see how it's simmering like that? So you just stir and let it simmer for a second. So I'm going to turn it down a little bit. And then I'm going to um, let it, there you go. Um, at this point, you can also add a little salt and pepper, depending on if your broth is seasoned or not. I'm going to put a little salt um, and a little pepper on here. Actually, I love pepper, so that's a little bit, if you don't like black pepper, then you don't have to put that much, but I like that. Stir that, so I'm flavoring this little roux, what might you say, or thickener. And I'm going to turn it all the way up high and let it boil like that because I, I don't have, this is why I love my um, like beef and chicken paste for soups and curries. I love my pastes. And um, my favorite is like the, um, this, this brand, um, better than bouillon. So, but I think you can use the dry also. So I just made a beef broth, and if you already have some, that's fine too. So you gradually, let me use uh, my whisk. You gradually whisk in your um, beef broth. See how it's really thick at first, and you want to whisk, and you don't want it to be clumpy, so you use a whisk. And then let it, pour it all in there. This is about, I want to say, three tablespoons of butter, three tablespoons of flour, and this is about three cups of broth. So, so I guess it'd be safe to say. Now, if, if it's not thick enough for you, now see, now I'm going to have, you can always add more, a little bit more flour, but put the flour in the water. If you do it a little bit like that, it won't be grainy. So I'm going to make sure it's really, really stirred in there. And um, then we're going to bring it to a boil and cover it. Well, I'm going to cover it up and then bring it to a boil. So again, you can make all this ahead, although I would recommend making carrots the day of. But if you don't have time, you can make it ahead and just warm it up. It'll still be yummy. But see, so I'm going to cover it so it'll boil quicker, more quickly. So once it boils, I'm going to turn it down to simmer. And that's why you have this awesome meal. And of course, I guess you can make homemade rolls ahead. That's another episode. <laughs> okay, so we're going to take a break while all this is warming up and then the meatloaf is cooking. Then we're going to come back and it all prettily together, so come back. Okay, you guys. Ooh, look at that. I hope you can see that. Yummy meatloaf. So now, really, you should let it cool for like 15 minutes um, before you serve it, with, but it's okay. I'm going to just transfer this over. <laughs> Let's see if I can do this good, well. Whew. Okay, here we go. There's our beautiful meatloaf. Wow. I'm going to move this over here. All right, so then we have our lovely, you can serve it however you want, of course, you know, but I'm just going to, for pictures and stuff, <laughs> I'm going to put it right in here. Put some mashed potatoes. Secret to mashed potatoes, of course, is lots of butter. So make sure you strain off your water when you, after you boil it. And then, let's put the carrots over here. Carrots on the side. Oops. I think that's good for now. Okay, and put up maybe put a little of parsley right there on the meatloaf. And I'll eat this carrot. <laughs> Hmm, okay. Let's dish it up. 
It looks so good. I don't want to mess it up. I guess you could put gravy on it now, but I'm just going to wait on the gravy on the plate. Um, let me get a knife. Close my oven. Okay. This is my favorite part right here, the, the crusty brown, the crusty part. So again, like you say, it's, it's cooked, it's just, and it will, it's a little bit hot right now to serve, but it should still hold together. Just going to put a piece, that fell over right there. Ah. Hmm, yummy. I don't know if that's gonna look really pretty. I got a broken piece in there. I'm just going to put it over here. <laughs> you know how it is. If you guys see in the back scenes, and they really, when they plate things, it just looks so perfect. And um, I'm not doing a great job right now. <laughs> Let's put a little bit of mashed potato right there. And maybe put some carrots. I'll put it over here. Well, I guess this is the plate I was going to eat. I don't want to eat that much right now, but okay. So, okay. So you guys have your meatloaf. Let's put a little gravy on top here. So you have your plate. You know what? I think I'm going to put a little gravy on here. Why not? Let's put a little gravy right there. Okay, there you go, guys. What do you think? I'm gonna take a bite. Does not look so good? <laughs> All right, let me taste this. My favorite part right here. A little bit of sauce. Mm. You guys will love this. Honestly, um. You could put a little salt and pepper on the meatloaf and put some gravy on it, but mm. so good. All right. See how easy it is? <laughs> I have to give credit to Cracker Barrel style. Cracker Barrel style meatloaf. So yummy. So good. So you guys, see how easy it is to make? So you go macy's to the happy shopping store and happily shop and then come back home and happily cook this meatloaf until next time come back to cooking Maisie with you and happy cooking